So I've just gotten back from day two of Google Cloud Next 2025. And today they basically had the developer keynote. They sort of filled in some of the details of things that they announced on the first day, etc. And really today was all about agents or certainly the developer keynote. I made the joke on Twitter that actually this year you don't count the number of times that AI is used. You count the number of times that the words agents is used. It was peppered through pretty much all of the presentation for the developer keynote. And in many ways, that really is a reflection of what has been announced and what people are really talking about at this conference. So it wasn't just Google talking about agents. One of the things that I spent a large amount of time today doing was going around the expo area with the YouTuber Prompt Engineering. Many of you will know his channel. If you don't, you should certainly check it out. I got to meet him earlier this week and we recorded a podcast today and stuff. And the two of us walked around looking at what people were doing for demos. And a lot of them were agents. And here's the really big takeaway. I think it's fair to say that both of us were pretty underwhelmed with what we saw. Where it would have been great to see people using agents for really fantastic things. Generally, what people were showing off as agents is what I think prompt engineering and I would both call sort of workflows, things like a currency converter, things like just small scripts and stuff like that. Now, don't get me wrong. Those things can be really useful, but I don't see those as being the fully agentic kind of solution that people really are going for. And they're certainly not the agents that people have been talking about that are going to put people out of jobs and stuff. Really what people were showing were cool LLM workflows and applications rather than fully agentic kind of things like we've been promised with agents, etc. Safe to say AGI is nowhere near in sight with any of the providers that we saw today. Now, the main thing that I want to talk about in this video is this whole agent to agent protocol that Google announced this week. So this is one of the big things that was announced in the initial keynote yesterday and was sort of also referred to a fair bit in the developer keynote today is this new agent to agent protocol. So I'm going to go through what it actually is, point out the good parts and perhaps the not so good parts and take a look at where this could actually be going for the future. All right. So the main idea with this is that while we have things like MCP, which allows your agent to be able to take advantage of various sort of tool use, prompting, running special prompts, allowing the model to access data, et cetera. All of those are built around one particular sort of client that is accessing all of those. So what Google is proposing is a new protocol that would be an agent to agent protocol. So the idea here is that what this actually allows to happen is that agents can then talk to other agents. So rather than just have say another agent as a tool, or being able to just do a pass off to an agent. This would be a more sophisticated version of that, of where the agents can actually collaborate in a way by having their own protocol to be able to find other agents that they might actually need, then to be able to sort of negotiate with those agents of like being able to sort of communicate, okay, this is what I want you to do. This is the format that I want it back in. Perhaps things like this is the language that I wanted in and be able to give a whole variety of different details. Now, this would be done by having the protocol use standards like HTTP, SSE, JSON RPC, et cetera, that they talk about in their blog post. Another part of the idea here is that obviously Google is trying to make all of this very secure by default. So I heard a funny joke yesterday when I was talking with one of my friends at the conference. And they made the joke when we were talking about MCPs and security, they said, oh yeah, didn't you know that the S in MCP stands for security? Now, of course, there is no S in there. And this was the point that they were actually getting at, that perhaps things like MCP is perhaps not totally secure by default. And this is one of the things that Google is trying to do. Now, I should stress that Google is not trying to replace MCPs, right? A2A is operating at sort of a different level. It's agent to agent communication, not sort of any agent to tool communication, et cetera. Now Google has put up both a blog post, a website, 
a GitHub URL, and even sample agents to show how they think this protocol would work. And there are a number of really interesting things in here. So they go out of their way to stress yet again that A2A loves MCP. Now, the last time I saw that something like this on a Google slide was a throwback to when they had TensorFlow loved Keras, only to have Keras be taken out of TensorFlow later on. So I'm not sure this is the best way to communicate it, but it does seem very clear that they have no sort of intention of replacing MCPs in here. What they're more interested in is things like this, agent discovery. Now, I'm going to let you in on one of the biggest sort of secrets that people have been talking about in agent framework companies, et cetera, for the past year or so. And that is the whole idea of that eventually you're going to have app store-like experiences for agents. So you're literally going to have like an agent store. And your agent is going to be able to go to that store and is going to be able to pick out the agents that it needs to get its job done. And it will probably pay them pennies or something for each thing that they operate, or maybe even more if it's a long running process, et cetera. So this is an idea that has been kicking around probably for sort of 18 months now, certainly very intensely over the past year. And my guess is that Google has not been immune to this either. So they've got this whole thing of discovery in here of that your agent should be able to go out there and discover other agents. And this protocol basically helps to do that, that each agent will have its own agent card that basically tells other agents what it can do, how it does it, perhaps details about it, etc. And you can see that they're sort of proposing a variety of different ways that agents can discover things that you could have sort of a registry of agents somewhere. You could have your own sort of private API that you ping. Each of these that they're putting here, are basically just different ways that your agent would be able to either work with other public agents or other internal private agents, et cetera. Now this makes a lot of sense, right? And this is one of the things that I think is really strong about the whole A2A protocol here. Now they've got a bunch of different things in here. I'm not going to go through all of it around the sort of JSON spec for doing it. They've got a bunch of different sample agents, and it's very interesting to see that they've got their new agent development kit, which I think I said wrong in the actual recording for the last video. I kept calling it the agent developer kit. And notice this, even Google is calling it the agent developer kit at times. It does seem to me that agent developer kit rolls off the tongue a little bit better than agent development kit. But anyway, they've got examples with that. They've got some stuff with Crew AI and Langchain and even their own gen kit. And one of the cool things here is you could imagine that you have your initial agent be in one language like JavaScript, etc., and it then calls other agents in Python or makes use of other agents all over the place for going through these sorts of things. Okay. So if you want to get a sense of what the A2A protocol is going to be like and what it can do, probably at the moment, the best place to start out is actually on their GitHub repo. They have a nice section in here about the conceptual overview, which talks about the whole sort of idea of agent cards, which I talked about for sort of discovery, the idea of making a sort of A to A server, which then can serve different agents, etc. The idea of having a client looking very similar to MCP in some ways here. And then there's some really good terminology about what they actually sort of talk about of being having a task having sort of messages, having artifacts. So an artifact is basically the output that you would then give back to a user or that an agent would then pass back to another agent, etc. And they go through a typical workflow of where given an input, a client will then go and fetch from a registry all the agents that would be relevant to this particular task. And then it will pick which one to actually use. And you can see that they've got this sort of outlined all in here. Now they've also put up some nice examples in here. They've also got some things in here talking again about how this is complementary to MCP and not replacing that. Now back to the original blog post, they've also got some info in here that's just reinforcing some of those things that we said. And they also sort of talk about the whole idea of having 50 technology partners. 
And it's really good to see that we've got people like Cohere here, which obviously a model building company. We've got Langchain, which is an agent framework company. And then there are a whole bunch of other sort of consulting companies and other companies in here. In fact, they've got this list of partners contributing to the agent to agent protocol. And on the whole, it looks good, except for one thing. We don't see Anthropic mentioned here at all. And this is the bit that really concerns me about the A to A protocol is that if Anthropic hasn't signed on to this, is Anthropic planning themselves just to basically have an MCP version two that does all of this agent to agent stuff and the tool stuff as well. So the world of technology is littered with protocols that Sort of got abandoned or never really accepted by people. I really hope that the agent to agent doesn't become one of those. Uh, Google has had a very good track record with protocols like gRPC and other things in the past. And they've also had a very good track record of making those protocols open and often sort of passing them off to another body so that it wasn't looking like it was just a Google thing. Now, I really hope that reasonably quickly, this is either decided that Anthropic is going to be in on this or not in on this, because I have the feeling if they were to actually extend the NCP protocol, then we're going to end up with conflicting protocols going on here. And that's really not good for anyone. So while it's fantastic that we've got all these companies listed here, it is a bit concerning that we're only sort of seeing Langchain here. I don't see Llama Index. I don't see Pydantic AI. I don't see a bunch of other agent frameworks. And probably most importantly, I don't see Anthropic listed here. And that's something that I would really like to see to have a lot more confidence in this going forward. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of the idea of sort of an agent to agent protocol what you think of the whole sort of agent marketplaces and where that's sort of going. And then also let me know what you would like to see in this kind of protocol that perhaps Google's left out. They are certainly communicating that they're open to feedback and they want feedback about this. So if you've got a bunch of ideas, please chime in in the comments and let me know what you think. And I know for sure that certain Googlers will be watching this. So let them know what you think as well. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.